If it's a therapy session, that's one thing. But this is, you know. <laughs> Bob De Niro, hi. This is my life in pictures. Me at that age, I don't know how old, I probably about three or four, maybe, or two. Uh, reminds me of my two youngest little girls uh, that I, they look, when at that age, my youngest, and I see a lot of similarity in that. And I see it also in my, one of my grandkids. Gia, the baby, always looks at my father's artwork. We hold it, she'll look at, it's interesting. It was an okay childhood. I had good memories and others that I suppose, like um, anybody would. Uh, I'm glad that I grew up in New York, was raised in New York. Uh, I'm glad that all my kids basically live here. Francis, he asked me to come to San Francisco uh, to, to read or something like that. And then, then he called back a, a few days later, whatever, it's just, just the part's yours, just come out and we'll get to know each other and talk and blah, 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 you know, and then that was what, I, as I remember, I don't think we went over the script or anything. Como te you, you know, obviously won an Oscar for that role. Um, you were not at the ceremony. I was shooting um, 1900 with Bertolucci in Italy, and so I was there for a long time during that period. They called me on a landline in those days. <laughs> Marty had a friend who sadly passed away. He became a stuntman, but was a... He, he, he did, he was part of a, a ranger or, um, I don't know, something special force type thing where he went into uh, certain other countries when these would call halo drops or whatever from high altitudes. And he had uh, Mohawk haircuts and we, we, uh, we were just talking about what he did and so on. And the, the idea of the Mohawk was, was of course an interesting one that we hadn't thought of. And so decided, well, that's what Travis will do. I was gonna shoot um, The Last Tycoon after where I needed hair and kind of wavy hair like uh, Irving Thalberg. So Marty and I, we, we realized that we had a, you know, he liked the ID, wanted me to do it, and we had this problem. I mean, we were having dinner one night after, and I said, uh, well, Dick Smith, let's let's see if we can, and we agreed, yeah, let's, let's try Dick uh, at the time. And uh, he was great makeup artist and he'd done Godfather 2 and 1 and uh, so he took it upon himself to, to do it. We did a test and it looked good. Is it true you, your previous two Oscars are in storage somewhere? Yeah, I have them someplace. I have a lot of stuff at the University of Texas. They keep everything preserved. They're in their care, if you will. Judge Murphy, 7 to 3, La Mata. Well, the weight, of course, was difficult. After the first 15 pounds, it gets, it's just work. And, and I was, a doctor was monitoring it, so, I, you know, cholesterol and things like that. But uh, it, it was uh, hard, especially the more weight, it's just hard. But that was the idea, to see how, how hard and how different physically. So we took a break of three or four months, I forget, and only shot one scene after we did the, the young stuff or the in shape part of the movie. And then we did one interim scene where I gained about 12 or 15 pounds when he's out of shape and he's in Florida. Um, we shot that scene and then I just kept doing the hiatus, um, just gaining weight. We had a reading of the script. Art Linson, the producer who brought the script to me and I met Michael Caton Jones and then I like to have a reading a lot of times, so we had a reading, and um, Leo was one of the other actors, uh, but not playing the part that he eventually did play. And I did, said to Art Linson, the producer, I said, Art, that, that kid was really, it was interesting. I didn't push it, I just said, but that kid had something special. And then they turned around and wound up uh, using Leo. What's going on here? I got this scholarship and you went nuts. He's crazy and I'm leaving. Great, go. Finally, about time, about time. Go. Then he told me, Leo, I remember correctly, he said, well, I just knew I wasn't going to get in there. I wasn't going to be it. So I just was more, 
uh, just didn't give a, a <laughs> <shit> about the, <laughs> well, yeah, or, or, or was less care because he did not know. And I always tell young actors when you're reading, assume you're not going to get the part so you can feel more free to take a chance because that'll be the interesting thing. Your choices, even if they're not right for the part you're reading for, they're, they're, they will draw people's uh, attention. Well, I always say I'm very lucky to have um, started working with Marty in my sort of late 20s and done all these projects together. Um, we kind of knew each other like this, the way, you know, with um, when we were teenagers, but um, 10, 12 years earlier or more. Um, and so I knew he was aware that he was doing something at NYU and we had a mutual friend go back and forth to his group and mine, and then, um, and then we finally met for a, uh, at Christmas dinner one, you know, one, uh, years later. And uh, I saw who's that knocking, and I said that was a really terrific movie, and you know, and and that's how it started. Then he said, I have the script, and Mean Streets was at that time called Season of the Witch, and so that's how it started. How often do people, quote, meet the parents to you? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> this thing they do. Uh... But I will be watching you, studying your every move. When you're putting on the TV and you're scrolling, do you ever come across your old movies and stop and maybe watch? Rarely, but um, if I do, sometimes I'll stop and see, because it's a, 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 as pure a moment as I can get of being objective. Mm -hmm not expecting it, seeing it, see this thing, see how, you know, oh, not too bad or whatever, you know. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? We had talked about doing a film festival, Jane Rosenthal and I, just, what about, you know? But then when 9-11 happened, we started talking seriously about doing it because of the neighborhood and helping to bring it back and so on. So that was, that's how it got started. We, we just had, the um, the first one and then the second one and it just grew and grew. You do a, a table read about a week before, or I think on the Monday before the Saturday, and then they start eliminating the skits and throwing them on the floor, literally as I remember when I did. And then you get closer to what the ones that you actually start doing, and then those would get whittled away Two, and then just before you do one performance earlier for a, an earlier audience, and then you have a meeting with Lauren Michaels, and, and everybody sits in there, the whole everyone, and they chip away at those, and you come up with the final uh, group of uh, uh, skits, if you will, or whatever, or to do. Don't, don't push, don't push, I'm oh. warning you, don't push. Oh, I am scared, I am you, you scared. You want to be scared? Yeah. You want to be scared, huh? Yeah. Oh. Go, go, go. The best part was uh, was just that you, you have a kind of a certain type of freedom because you have so little time to do anything. You can't think and you just, you get used to reading those cue cards. So it's, it's fun. I, I enjoy doing things, uh, comedy if you will, m the, what type of comedy I can do because there's a certain type of freedom with it. Well, we've known each other a long time and we just, uh, especially in The Irishman, that was going on for years and, and we had always wanted Al to do, play uh, Jimmy Hoffa and it went on for a long time before finally it happened. Jimmy, I'm trying to tell you something. I know you are. You're telling me they're threatening me and I gotta do what they say, which is but it's more absolute. Than a threat. It's the bottom line. And he he's great. We had a you know, couldn't have been happier that he was doing that movie. Yeah. We've always had a, a, a terrific relationship and I don't know if we'll do anything you never know again. I saw David O. Russell's The Fighter. And I, I, I thought it was really terrific, and everybody in it. And so then this was coming along, and David was thinking of using me for the father. And so and then I, 
I read the book and then I read the script. I know you don't want to listen to your father, I didn't listen to mine. And I'm telling you, you gotta pay attention to the signs. The script was different than the book, a little different, but that always happens. It's like the director or writer director it makes it their own, personalize it in some way. And so I was in. Jennifer Lawrence has been telling a story recently about you came to her wedding and uh, she told you to leave her rehearsal <laughs> dinner because you looked uncomfortable. No, I went. I wasn't. It, it was. It was fine. I yeah. mean, I had. I only came for that part of it anyway, okay. and it was nice. Yeah. It, it wasn't. Any. It wasn't that long. Maybe I stayed an hour if that. Were you surprised, you know, when you when you announced that you had another child that that uh, it made so many headlines? No, I guess not. With the, such an uh, adorable baby, it's uh, she's so sweet. And pretty, just look at her, and everything else goes away. So it's uh, it's just a great uh, joy and relief to just be with her in the, in the moment. The kids all get a big kick out of her, and um, and the grandkids even who she's their uh, their aunt and their <laughs> you know their. Maybe admit, about to be teenagers. I think they are happy about it. Yeah. So I and, and I'm gonna have them more and more with her because they're the you know they're the fact that they'd all be together is just everything to me. Well, I was aware of the project uh, that Marty and Leo wanted to do, and we were trying to get uh, Irishman going. And if there was a moment where they were seeing if we would do this first, um, but I wanted to do Irishman first, but I committed to um, Killers of the Flower Moon. And, and then they were, Leo and Marty were telling me that there's another way they're gonna do it. Uh, but I just waited for the script, but I was in no matter what. I, I knew whatever it was, it'd be good. And um, it was a, a great experience, especially shooting on the, actually where, the actual locations. Were these women dying? Would how will they suffer from illness? You have to make it, the head rats come to you. You see? And I always say this, he's good with everyone. He allows people to do what they can do best, and then he'll direct from, from there, but he's, whether it be an actor or director of photography or costume designer, whatever, he, you know, that's his, uh, and then he has very clear ideas, but knows not to impose anything um, and let the people just feel free enough to be expressed as much as they can through whatever they're doing as an actor, as a costume designer, as a director of photography, uh, and all the other departments, you know, it's important.